Tired of hearing and seeing the same old Joker storyline? Well, neither are we, but we have some new ones for you. Today we're going to share with you some Joker origin stories you probably never heard of. Prepare yourself, because these are not going to be easy on the stomach or mind to hear. This is going to be a bumpy ride. But before we begin, hover your mouse over to that red subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all of your crime fighting news. And don't you dare forget to click that like button, otherwise the Joker may be knocking at your door asking why you didn't. And also, there are major spoilers ahead, so prepare. I don't want there to be any hard feelings. Let's get started. Life's been good to me. <laughs> His aunt Eunice washed him with bleach. While the Killing Joke origin is the closest to an official one there is, the Joker does stipulate he prefers his past to be multiple choice, so he's an unreliable narrator. There are other theories floating around, many by the Joker himself, and the Aunt Eunice story is one of the most horrifying. In this possible origin, there is no chemical bath, no factory, no Red Hood. Here, the Joker's problems begin in childhood. As a little boy, he's raised by his Aunt Eunice, an abusive sociopath. The two of them live in a rundown apartment where he is regularly starved, beaten, and screamed at. He has no friends, his only companion being a small stuffed animal with a purple hat that he desperately clutches onto at all times until his Aunt Eunice takes it away from him. Perhaps the most horrifying mistreatment that the boy suffers is when Aunt Eunice, furious at him for never washing his ugly face, decides she's going to clean him up the same way she cleaned up her husband, with bleach and a scrub brush. It's implied Eunice frequently washed the boy down with bleach until his skin of eventually became white. This Aunt Eunice story offers a different explanation for the Joker's strange appearance as well as his twisted mental state. Always brings a smile to my face. His insanity is just an act. One argument that many have raised against the more sympathetic takes on the Joker's origin is that the Joker's cunning brilliance, sharp reflexes, and knowledge of the criminal underworld couldn't have come from nowhere. The story Case Study by Paul Dini and Alex Ross suggests that the Joker might not even be crazy. Perhaps all his madness is just an act performed by a perfectly sane, perfectly rational person, feigning insanity as a form of revenge against the city that ruined him. Case Study details a medical report on the Joker written by Harley Quinn before she was assigned to the Joker. The the report suggests that the man who would be the Joker was a major player in Gotham's crime scene for many years, casually avoiding any charges or reputation through a combination of cleverness, wit, and ruthlessness. If this man was the Joker, even back then, he had a tendency to constantly use new names and new identities, always slipping under the radar as he overthrows major crime bosses and takes over their territory. Go back to ripping off mob dealers? No, no. The decision to become the Red Hood here was not of desperation, but for the thrill of it. This nameless crime boss had grown tired of being so powerful and wanted to have reckless fun like in the old days. Well, it's time to retire. He's an immortal demon. How has the Joker lived so long, despite one near death after another? How does he always survive those big falls, those exploding factories, those dips into the harbor, those burning buildings? What if he's immortal? One of the most out there theories regarding the Joker's origins is that he may be older than Gotham City itself. The Endgame storyline proposes that throughout Gotham's history, countless inhabitants have fallen prey to a terrifying white demon called the Pale Man of Gotham City. It's theorized that the Pale Man was once a regular human who came into contact contact with a chemical compound named Dionysium, one of the main ingredients in Ra's al Ghul's Lazarus Pit, which then rendered him immortal. Since his exposure to Dionysium, the Pale Man has haunted Gotham for generations, like a mystical Jack the Ripper. <laughs> always emerging during the city's most catastrophic events. If the Joker is the Pale Man, then it means that he's been pretending to be a regular human being all along, merely for the sake of toying with Batman. You complete. Me, your garbage. However, the finale of Endgame suggests that the whole thing is a massive ploy on the part of the Joker to mess with Batman's head. Talk about twisted games. Taking things a little more seriously. The Dark Knight. How did he get those scars? Back when Heath Ledger was cast as the Joker, no one could have foreseen he would become the most iconic version of the villain. Ditching the perma white skin and chemical bath for powdery makeup and a Glasgow smile, Ledger's Joker was the living embodiment of chaos, a philosophical serial killer killer who was every bit Batman's equal. And like the comic book character before him, this Joker came out of nowhere, but liked teasing his victims with false stories about his identity. I just want her to know that I don't care about the scars. 
In the film, the Joker offers at least two explanations, both of which may be false. In one, he claims to have once had a wife, whose face was cut up by loan sharks. In order to show her he didn't care about the scars, he says he cut his own cheeks up. One thing that does seem for sure is that the Joker probably did have some issues with his father, since there's at least one other instance of him lashing out at another character who reminds him of his old man. You remind me of my father. One theory hypothesizes that the Joker may have been a war veteran with PTSD, explaining his comfort with and access to all that military-grade weaponry. Other theories suggest that he may be an escapee from Arkham Asylum, a former circus worker, or an incarnation of the devil. Oh, criminals in this town used to believe in things. He was a bored bank robber. The Joker origin presented in the Lovers and Mad Men storyline starts from a similar place as the one in Case Study. It's based on the idea that a man with the Joker's noteworthy talents couldn't have just come from nowhere. Lovers and Mad Men, though, presents a somewhat different possibility. The future Mr. J was actually Jack, a genius bank robber who got so good at his job that he became bored and apathetic. The Joker we know today is always craving new thrills, and he hates when things get stagnant. In the story, Jack and his criminal gang perform another run of the mill bank heist in Gotham, but this time, Batman intercepts. This dramatic occurrence spurs new energy in Jack's life. He can't remember the last time something exciting foiled his plans. Jack begins doing bigger and bigger heists, trying to get Batman's attention, aching for another exciting encounter. When they finally do come face to face again, Batman whips a batarang at Jack's face, splitting his mouth open, and giving the villain a gruesome Glasgow smile, reminiscent of the Dark Knight. One chemical splash later, and the Joker is born. The Animated Series Origin Without question, one of the most enduring and celebrated incarnations of the Joker is the one featured in Batman the Animated Series. Mark Hamill's voice is so distinctive that it's been featured in multiple movies and video games even in the years since the DCAU ended. Why so formal? Me Casa Nostra as Sue Casa Nostra. And the way that the Joker was written combines the best of every version. The Animated Series never delved too deeply into the Joker's beginnings. However, the clues that the series does show regarding Joker's backstory are straight from the classic origin, with the character presented as having been a gangster who at one point fell into chemicals that bleached his skin. One unique reference point occurs in Batman Mask of the Phantasm. The beloved film tells an epic love story about Batman's beginnings, culminating in a present-day three-point climax between Batman, Andrea Beaumont the Phantasm, and the Joker. The film reveals via flashback that when the pre-Joker worked for the mob, he was personally involved in the murder of Carl Beaumont, Andrea's father, and the man who was almost Bruce's father-in-law. In one neat plot twist, it turns out that the pre-Joker and a pre-Batman Bruce Wayne actually crossed paths at one point, if only for a moment, neither of them realizing that they were encountering their greatest enemy for the first time. I am not someone who is loved. He had psychotic tendencies at an early age. One particularly disquieting take on the Joker's beginnings appeared in the 1990 out-of-continuity anthology The Further Adventures of the Joker. This contained a story that may be from the Joker's childhood. The tale begins with an abusive father, a trope which recurs enough within the Joker's various origins that we can almost mark it as canon. I hate my father. Okay, stop. But this particular version of Joker's dear old dad is intensely obsessed with organization and tidiness. On top of that, he's equally pushy about laughter, always screaming at his wife and son to smile more, to laugh at his jokes, and so on. What marks this particular take unique is that it implies Joker's homicidal tendencies didn't manifest in adulthood, that they were inherent from the beginning. The little kid who would become the Joker is depicted as killing dozens of small birds and rodents, keeping a collection of their tiny bones and manipulating their remains into weird little art projects. A later story in the comics also lines up with this tale. When the Atom goes into the serial killer's mind, the hero stumbles upon memories of a teenage Joker setting his house ablaze when his parents happen upon his dead animal collection. Creepy stuff. You think your mother will like him? Martha Wayne is the Joker. What if Bruce Wayne had been shot instead of his parents? How would Thomas and Martha Wayne, Gotham's great philanthropists, react to such a personal tragedy? Well, according to the Flashpoint timeline, Thomas Wayne would become a recluse. He would dedicate himself to avenging his lost son and eventually become a dark and murderous incarnation of Batman. Martha, on the other hand, would snap. She'd lose herself and even slice her cheeks open in a permanent Glasgow smile. In Flashpoint, Martha Wayne becomes the Joker, and she is just as scary as the Joker we know from the DC Universe. 
Needless to say, this brings her into direct conflict with her husband, Batman, creating a deeply heartbreaking antagonism between the two of them. When the Flash of the DC Universe comes to the Flashpoint timeline and begins working to reset history, Thomas makes a point to reconnect with Martha, informing her that the universe may change so that Bruce will never have to die. However, upon finding out that in the new original timeline, her son will become Batman, Martha is so horrified that she runs away and falls to her death, crash landing in a rocky underground cavern. Uh, you, me, Sally and the gang. There are three Jokers. So here's the current big thing in the Batman world. DC Rebirth has been one of the biggest comic book events and many revelations are still slowly seeping out. Between Batman's secret plans, a shocking twist involving the Watchmen, and the return of the post-crisis Superman, lots of things have been happening. But one of the wackiest of all was the possible revelation that the Joker may not be one man, but three. There's this mystical throne called the Mobius Chair which possesses all knowledge in the entire universe and thus can answer any question you ask it. In the story, when Batman gets a chance to sit on the chair, he asks it to tell him the Joker's true identity. In response, the chair tells him something rather unexpected. There are three. Three Jokers? We still don't know exactly what this means, whether it's three different men, three different versions of the same man from different universes, three different personalities inside one man, or what have you. The first one is the original Joker of the Golden Age, the second one the violent murderer of the Killing Joke era, and the third one the increasingly bloodthirsty Joker of the Modern Age. So far, we still don't know exactly what it all means, but we'll be anxiously awaiting answers until they arrive. I trust you don't have me followed on my day off. If you ever took one, I might. Alfred is the Joker. And finally, we have this bizarre possibility. This wild twist was presented in Neil Gaiman's Whatever Happened to the Caped Crusader, a comic specifically written to be the last Batman comic, and thus not in continuity. Still, it's one of the more interesting takes out there. The story is narrated by Batman, who has seemingly died but is watching his own funeral proceed. Various friends and foes come to speak about the details of his life and death. They vary tremendously depending on who is telling the story. But things get weird when Alfred talks talks about Bruce's early days as Batman, painting a picture of a desperate man who's failing at being a vigilante, leading to even more stress and desperation. In order to help Master Bruce regain his confidence, Alfred hires some of his friends to portray costumed criminals. Finally, realizing that his dear friend is like Captain Ahab in search of a whale, Alfred endeavors to become his Moby Dick. He dons white face paint, red lipstick, and a devious smile to transform himself into the Joker, giving Bruce the arch enemy he has needed all along. It's worth noting that Bruce himself in the narration doesn't feel that this story is realistic. Nonetheless, it's certainly one of the more unique Joker origins out there. Is it the scars? You want to know how I got them? What other origins could exist for the Clown Prince of Crime? Where did the Joker come from? Be sure to leave all your wild, wacky, and unique theories in the comments. Also, don't forget to share and like this video and click that subscribe button to join our notification squad so you can stay up to date with all of our videos. And as always, thanks for watching.